amen. But tonight, I just want to remind us, amen, of what we're standing on for the year. And this is your slogan to help you to remember what we're standing on this year. And you need to write this down or somehow remember it, that your gratitude is your attitude toward God. Oh, isn't that good? So that's going to help you to remember that this year is gratification. It's gratitude toward God. Amen. So your gratitude is your attitude toward God for 2022. Because you're going to grow more than you've ever grown before. You're not going to be the same. You're going to see things happen for you that didn't happen and you thought was not going to happen, amen, in your lifetime, but it's going to happen because you're going to be flowing in that knowing that you know that you know, and that is gratitude. And again, I say your gratitude is your attitude toward God for 2022, amen. Tell a friend, amen. Share the good news of the gospel. Amen. So without any further ado, let's just get into the word tonight and talk a little bit more about that gratitude and tell you how God is speaking to us about this and that we may flow in a more powerful way than we've ever done before. Amen. So Father God, in the name of Jesus, we pray that you anoint the ears of the saints of God, that they would hear clearly, I say clearly, what you are saying to them in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So with that, saints of God, so from that gratitude, we understand, and I mentioned this a couple of times already. So from that gratitude being both thankfulness, thankfulness and gratefulness, or thankful and grateful is a combination. Those two things equals gratitude. In Revelation, it talks about thankfulness or being thankful thanksgiving to God, which means honor, power, and might. In the book of Revelations, it talks about that. It's when everyone bows down to the Lord, the 20 and four beasts, or the 24 and four beasts, hallelujah, 24 elders and four beasts, bows down to the Lord, and they give him thanks, and it's thankfulness and honor, power, and might. Amen. All belongs to him. And they praise and they say forever and forever and forever. So the reason that they're in the throne room, mind you, is that they're already flowing in gratitude. They honor God in a powerful way. I feel the Holy Spirit right now. They honor God in a powerful way. They're always telling God how great he is. They're always saying, holy, holy, holy. All oh, they're blessing God and they're telling him about his glory. Oh, in his wisdom. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, they're crying out, hallelujah. They're, they're saying these wonderful things, how righteous he is forever and forever and forever. Amen and amen and amen. They are showing, they are surrounded, I say, in the courtyards. They are surrounded in the throne room of God. They are in his presence and they are acting and showing gratitude to God. But can you imagine the anointing that's there because of that gratitude? And that's what I'm, hallelujah, trying to tell you about this season that God has laid up on my heart to share with you so you can begin to walk in this. Notice, whatever said in the throne room is the word of God. He said it, it is, it was, and it shall be. We know that God does these things, but when we flow in gratitude, as I mentioned, we can be like Jesus. When whatever God says, we say. Whatever we say, God says, because we're flowing in a, in a realm, hallelujah, in a sphere that unexplainable in terms of having power and walking with the Lord. So from that gratitude being both thankfulness and gratefulness, and here is one thing that we sometimes take for granted. And one of the most wonderful things that we should be walking in gratitude for is salvation. Oh, somebody, isn't that wonderful? Salvation, that's given to us from God. This is why we need to be walking in gratitude. Because in salvation, as we know, belongs and comes from God and God alone. 
we begin to know this. The psalmist talks about it in 4016. He says, let all those that seek thee rejoice and be glad in thee. Let, let such as love thy salvation say continually, I say, just like the 24 and four beasts. They throw down their crowns and they say continually, holy, 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 almighty God. Hallelujah. So let, I say, let us seek and rejoice in the Lord and be glad that, oh, let us share in his glory. Let us then love thy salvation. Say continually, the Lord be magnified. Oh, somebody, you need to raise a hand on that because you're now walking in a place with God. You're beginning to see something different that you hadn't thought about before because God wants you to know this. Let me read this scripture again. Let all those that seek thee rejoice and be glad in thee. Let that let such as love thy salvation say continually, the Lord be magnified. Oh, saints of God, what about that favorite scripture that we love so much? The one that I'm constantly saying, Psalms 91. But let's talk about 14 through 16. This is good, saints. Psalms 91, 14 through 16. He says, because he has set his love and shown gratitude, somebody. <laughs> because he has set his love and shown gratitude upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. Hallelujah. He didn't say you wasn't going to get in trouble. See, we, 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 we overlooked that part huh? because, you know, sometimes we get in trouble, somebody. <laughs> but I'm here to tell you that the Lord says he will deliver you from trouble. When you begin to understand who he is and show him gratitude, he says, because thou hast set thy love upon him, and shown him gratitude, then he can deliver you from this trouble. He will deliver you and honor you. Amen. Oh, that's some. You ever notice something about when you were in some trouble and, you know, the devil thought he had you, somebody, but then you came out like the Hebrew boys or oh, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. You came out like that and you didn't have a stench of smoke smelling on you. You came out like, a, oh, somebody, because, oh, somebody, hallelujah, I felt the Holy Ghost, because God delivered you from that situation, didn't he? And when he delivered you, he honored you in it, didn't he? Oh, somebody ought to be feeling the Holy Ghost with me because you are going to learn how to walk in gratitude in the name of Jesus Christ. So you need to know that he will deliver you and honor you. He says, with long life, some, oh, somebody thought that was over for them, but I'm here to tell you, long life, hallelujah. He said it in his word, I believe it, somebody. I, then he says, I will satisfy you whole oh, with long life in the name of Jesus and show you that wonderful thing, hallelujah, oh, his salvation, mm, somebody, oh, somebody. Let me share something else with you because it gets better. Hallelujah. I knew it was going to be good tonight, but I didn't know how much it was going to be good because we're walking in a sphere of gratitude. Hallelujah. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. And that's scriptural. Galatians 3 and 26. Congratulations, saints of God, to all who are saved by God. You have made the most important decision of your entire life. Welcome to the family of God. You are now beginning to understand and show God more gratitude than you've ever done before because you begin to realize. Now, I want you to call back like David always did. He called back to his remembrance and he asked and he realized how God had saved him out of many battles. David had many battles. How many of you had some battles? Oh, somebody, come on. And God brought you and delivered you. Did you not show him gratitude? Oh, you said, thank you, Lord, but what about, oh, somebody's the gratitude, loving on God, showing him, thanking him, honoring him. Oh, somebody praying to him in awe, in the fear of the Lord, letting him know, oh, like the holies of holies do. Oh, letting him know how great and wonderful, how much you appreciate him in the name of Jesus. Grateful, hallelujah, that he even allowed you to live 
in the name of Jesus. All this salvation is something. What is salvation truly then from God? It's a gift. We know it is, and God has to give it to us. He will give us this salvation after he deliver us and honor us, according to Psalms 91. Now, I like that. He deliver us first from any foolishness. Then he honors us. Then he gives us salvation. Oh, somebody. Notice what he did with Jesus. He delivered him. He honored him and gave him salvation. Why? Because Jesus flowed in nothing, nothing but gratitude. He was always thanking God, but he was grateful to God that God gave him the opportunity to save us. Oh, somebody, this is so good. What does it mean then? What is this salvation? What does it mean to be lost? Oh, somebody, Jesus knows this. We was lost, but because of him, we were found. Jesus came to seek and to save those who were lost. Hallelujah, and are lost. What does it mean to be a lost and guilty sinner in the eyes of God? Why is it that the non-Christians are under the wrath of God? The essential reason that we all were once lost and guilty sinners under the wrath of God was our relationship to sin and the lack of conformity to the character and the will of God. We, 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 we can comprehend that, can't we? Again, the essential reason that we all was once lost and guilty, guilty sinners under the wrath of God was our relationship to sin. And the lack of conformity to the character and the will of God. Are we sinners because we sin? Or do we sin because we're sinners? Both are true. The Bible says that we are all guilty of personal acts and attitude of sin. This is in Romans. It also indicates that we all are guilty because we are born with a sinful nature. And I've talked about the fact that you have a sin member that lives inside you. Oh, somebody. But I tell you the truth, that through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, you can cause the flesh to be put under subjection. God says he tempts you not. Hallelujah. So then know this, saints of God. Know these things. It's also, again, I say to you, indicated that we are guilty because we were born in a sinful nature. Ultimately inherited from our ancestral father, Adam. The Bible even shows that all humankind is viewed by God as having sin in Adam. Initial sin. We know Adam failed and that sin, we know what that sin caused to happen. But then we were lost, I say, but Jesus came, he came to find us. Oh, saints of God, meditate on this tonight. The penalty that is the result of our sin, as we know, is death. Physical death, then, is put like this. It's the separation of the soul from the body. That's what physical death is. Then the spiritual death, then, is the separation of the soul from God. Notice those stages that happens. Again, the physical death is the separation of the soul from the body. When you die, the soul leaves. You don't know where it's going to go unless you put something in it to go where it needs to go. Your spirit man has an opportunity now to drive the soul where it needs to go. And it needs to be on its way to God. But you, dear one, you have the authority over your spirit as well as over your natural body, the flesh. You have this authority through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. So then when the physical death happens, the separation of the soul from the body, which affects me and mankind as a result of, again, Adam's sin, charged to our account. But the spiritual death is the separation of the soul from God. A separation of the soul from God. If the soul don't make it to God, don't make it to heaven, guess what? It's going to hell. We understand this, and eternal death then, eternal death is the combination of both. The combination and the extension of the spiritual death. The 
eternal separation of the soul from God and the lake of fire. Those are the three definitions. And this is why gratification and gratitude is so important. We learn many things via the scriptures. Scriptures describe our condition because believing in Christ Jesus as being under the wrath of God. Believing in Christ Jesus, we do not have to experience the wrath of God. Whosoever believe in the Son has eternal life, but who, whosoever rejects the Son will not see life, but death. They shall see and remain in the wrath of God. So then I say to you, salvation, what does it mean again? What does it mean to be saved? I've explained to you on one of my last sermons about the, the, being saved is like being salvaged. You was dead, but now you're alive. You were nothing but trash and filth, but now you've been dusted off, bathed in the Holy Spirit, and now you're worth something to him. Amen? So salvation then, again, what does it mean to be saved? Salvation is from the Lord. I've mentioned that already. It's both negative and positive. For we are saved from a lost condition. Our sins are forgiven. And we are bought into a saved condition that provides the believer with several dozen possibilities. Seven dozen possible blessings. The moment we trust Christ. The moment we begin to trust Christ, we begin to flow in the blessings of him. The blessings are very comprehensive, though, for our salvation includes every divine undertaking. For the believer, from his deliverance, from his deliverance out of the lost state of his final presentation to glory. His final presentation to glory. Conform to the image of Christ. Paul declares that God has already blessed us with all spiritual blessings in Christ. I say to you, saints of God, you need to begin to think how blessed you are. You need to begin to understand what gratitude really is about. Knowing these simple things is, is just 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 barely touching the surface of how powerful and mighty our God is. For we love him, for he is a magnificent God. There's none other. One of the things that I like about God, this gift of salvation, John 3, 1 and 5, John 3, 1 and 5, and I'll end with this. It says that the gift of salvation is the gift of justification. Let me say that again. The gift of salvation is the gift of justification. Faith is the gift we receive from God that enables us to actively and willingly believe and keep on believing in our Lord Jesus Christ. So when you begin to trust God to the immense power, to the infinite power, salvation means being saved from sin. And Christians, again, believers, believe that salvation is essential to have a, having a relationship with God while we're on earth and to have an eternal life with God in heaven after death. When people believe in Jesus, they believe that they receive God's grace, which helps them to lead a good Christian life. Gratitude helps us to believe and flow in that life. But the one thing about gratitude, it not only does that, but it does this too. It allows us to walk in authority with Christ. Can you imagine when Jesus was talking like God, when he was speaking things and they were happening because God was speaking? It was Jesus and God was one and the same. But then when he was speaking and things were happening, this is greater than just being thankful. It's greater than just being grateful. It's greater than that. 
it's like being in the courtyards and things are happening and that they're just unexplainable because they're happening because God said it. Can you imagine walking in that authority and that anointing? So saints of God tonight, if I can say anything to you is that we are, this church, we're going to be walking in so much gratitude that you're, it's going to rock your socks off. And what God is going to say to you is that you're going to gravitate to this. And you're going to see miracles. The church is going to grow. And it's going to grow because of the gratitude that we have for God, what God wants us to do. We, saints of God, have been put in a place so God could bless us. So I want to thank, first of all, God so much. But I want to thank you because you are now a part of this. And God is going to do a miracle in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And we give God gratitude in the name of Jesus. Saints, if this has blessed you in any way, give God gratitude. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, bless the Lord, saints, for God is truly good. I thank him now that we moved in a new, new year in this wonderful thing that he's given us. Amen.